Welcome to another Jack Reacts. New setting. Yeah. Perfect. Probably going to change again soon. So, we are reviewing Sheldon Evans. Sheldon. Great name. Must be intelligent with a name like Sheldon. And wears glasses. Perfect. He's talking about, and I haven't watched this, got a ton of views, which is always a good sign. It was very new, September the 11th, and it's talking about the recession in 2022. And how you can actually make money from it. So interested to see, I think he's a trader. So it'd be interesting to see what he has to say about it. I am in the camp, as you know, that we will have a crash in 2023 and that I'm excited about it. And the reason is that when crashes happen, there are money to be made. If you are wise enough and willing to take some risks, i.e. I sold everything. I live in a rented house. My office is in my house that I rent and we've sold pretty much every asset that we have so that we are cash rich waiting for this crash and then we can buy at a discount. That's the plan. So without further ado, let's play Sheldon. We're on the cusp of an absolutely incredible once in a generation opportunity to book. Not once in a generation, I don't believe that. Crashes happen every, well, 20 years-ish. Although with crypto and all these other sort of things, it could be once in a generation, who knows? Build wealth right now. While everyone is panicking and the markets are down across the board, you can set yourself up for more wealth than you ever imagined if you prepare yourself early enough. This 2022 to 2023 recession is going to be like none other. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to take this opportunity to join the millionaires and even the billionaires that this recession will create. Regardless of whether you've got a net worth of zero or 10 million, there's an opportunity here that if you capitalize on correctly, will set you up to multiply your wealth. But there's something different about this recession, something that makes it unlike any other, which is crucial to understand. Most videos won't even talk about this or understand the implications, but I'm gonna cover it in this video. What is a recession? and who succeeds during one. The word recession itself is enough to bring up images of people losing their jobs, their homes, the stock market crashing, and the all around misery. So who even profits during a recession? And how is it even at all possible to thrive in an environment like this? It's simple, really, just follow the money. A recession is the transition of an economy from one that's booming with high consumer spending to one that's contracting with people and companies pulling back on expenses and deleveraging. When living costs like rent, food, and energy rise, you have less to spend on everything else. You can't really cut back on housing costs other than moving to a lower cost area, which in a so this is a great point. So at the moment in the UK, especially cost of living crisis has gone nuts. Everything's going up. The rents are going up. The interest rates are going up. Food costs going up. There's only so much money and, and everyone's giving you these how to save money but like, there's only so much you can save unless you just stop eating or heating your home there's only so much you can save what is uncapped is your earning potential and this is where everyone gets it wrong in their head and their mindset is so wrong is that they sit there and go well i can't earn more because i can't work more i can't i can't ask my job for a pay rise you can but what i would be looking at is how can i make money outside of my current job that is going to bolster it 100 200 300 quid a month stop worrying about the millionaires you have to be a mid like become a millionaire that's not what people are saying if you can make 500 quid a month on a little side hustle or a commission job or you know something else on the side then you don't have to worry so much about the change of lifestyle because you're building something else on the side. But anyway. Itself costs money to do. But rather than buying a new pair of $200 sneakers, you glue up your old ones and you get back to walking. With money being tighter and debt repayments becoming more expensive due to interest rate hikes, recessions aren't the best time to finance a new car or go on a vacation. New clothes, accessories, household items all get put on hold while the money is tight, resulting in a general decline in retail. Essentially, stop spending money on short-term pleasures because they could potentially be worth multiple pulls more in just a few years if you simply control your impulses. With this pullback in spending, overall GDP shrinks, less business is conducted. Companies that rely on fair weather spending, like a Lambo dealership, for example, see profits drop, margins shrink, and they have to cut back on costs, eventually firing staff. This spreads throughout the whole economy as spending dries up and people start losing their jobs. With lost jobs comes a failure to pay bills and defaults on loans, car repayments, and mortgages. The fear spreads like wildfire as the economic dominoes drop one by one. With people fearful for their job security, seeing their property value drop and the investment portfolios plummet, it's terrifying and the spiral becomes self-fulfilling and is a well-known psychological phenomenon known as the negative wealth effect takes hold. People feel poorer as the value of their home and their portfolios drops. While this is true in terms of their wealth, their actual cash flow is not even affected. It's not even at risk, yet people pull back on spending and they try and save more. This is why it's so incredibly important to secure a good form of cash flow because that's what's going to keep you safe. 
safe. You should do everything in your power to be able to continue living without having to lay a finger on your portfolio. Or your this is so important and people leave it till it's too late until they feel the effect. You know what's going on in the world. You've seen it. You might have locked in an interest rate on your mortgage. You might have locked in your utility prices until 2022 and for two years rather. So you're not going to feel it. And then you continue living your life. And then in two years time, you get absolute in the and it's not the way to do it because no one wants to get fucked in it. Some people do, bad analogy. Basically what I'm saying, what I'm saying is take action now. Start looking at how you can earn extra bits of money, small amounts, sell loads of your shit that you have in the house that you haven't even looked at. Start build and, and put it into an investment, put it into a stock or a share or a crypto or something. Try something because you will you will feel you will be happy that you did it in a year's time and the whole bottom I keep talking about bottoms falls out of the market. It's really important that you don't bury your head and you don't just pretend like everybody else does, carrying on living life, hoping that somebody else, a government or a whatever is gonna come and save them and their life will remain unchanged. It will be changed. 2023 is gonna hurt. It will hurt a lot less if you put the action in and now your investments. It's way easier to weather the storm if you don't have to dip into your assets while they're down in value, especially if they aren't awfully liquid assets like real estate. You don't have to sell your assets or your house for a loss. Now keep this in mind because we'll come back to this extremely important factor later on in the video. The overall situation and yours, how does it compare? First, how do we even know that a recession is coming or that we might even be in one right now? It's actually pretty easy. Among other things, a recession is defined by two consecutive quarters of negative growth with a 0.6% drop in quarter two data released in July following a 1.6% drop back in quarter one, technically we're actually already in a recession. In fact, right now, 97% of CEOs think we're actually in a recession or will be in one very, very soon. These executives and business leaders are preparing. So why aren't you? Let's say you have no money right now. What's the best way you can prepare or take advantage of the situation? You could skimp and save more money each month, pull some extra shifts to increase your income or move in with a housemate. But I'm not here to reiterate the generic advice that you've probably heard a hundred times before. This video isn't about how to save money. It's about how to become wealthy. Though of course, to build wealth, you will need to save more, but more importantly, you need to increase your earning potential. The most important thing is what you do with that money. So with that in mind, what have people done to build wealth in the past during recessions? Groupon, a discount coupon provider, which I'm sure you've heard of, was founded at the height of the 2008 recession. While other companies shrunk and went bust, they grew rapidly as bargain conscious shoppers flocked to their service. Airbnb was also founded during this time, seeing an opportunity as travelers pulled back from expensive hotels, but still needed short-term accommodation. It started from renting out out a single air mattress back in 2008 to a global business worth nearly $70 billion today. Actually, more. Almost every discount retailer, grocery store, and industry disrupting service you know about today started during a recession. Cutting huge chunks of market cap out of large businesses who struggled with decreased revenue, a recession is exactly this, a rebalancing of wealth. Inefficient and over-leveraged businesses and ideas will get strung out and shaken up by up-and-comers taking their place. The faster you can execute, the faster you can start generating cash flow. So I don't mean immediate go out and try and build a business with a heavy startup cost, like a physical product business or a software company. Unless, of course, you have the capital to bootstrap that and get it up and running as fast as possible. I'm talking about service-based or digital businesses that often require little to no startup costs, and you can literally do it from whatever device you're watching this video on right now. If you have access to the internet, you have... I agree with this. I really do. And everyone makes excuses. Oh, I can't do. It's not that easy. That's the biggest one. It's not that easy, though. And no one's saying this is easy it's much easier to work your bollocks off and learn and make mistakes and start a new business much easier to do that than it is to sit there wait and then get <laughs> by a big recession because you have nothing you can do then you're stuck you're <laughs> so take some risks and they're not even risks you're doing this stuff on the side watch some videos on youtube take some action Message me in the comments if you'd like to come and help us find deals and we will pay you for them on a monthly basis. We'll give you a third of the money from the deal if you find us a property and we'll show you how to find that property. These opportunities are out there and our business model is crash proof, recession proof, utility proof, cost of living prices proof because we knew this was coming. I've known this was coming two years. I thought it'd be sooner, I've got to say. <laughs> I sold my house thinking it was the top of the market, it was far from it. It was a good few years out, but I'm ready. We've now focused hard on building a business that is recession proof and will continue to make money and allow us to scale during a recession rather than pulling back like every other business and sitting on our hands.
no excuse. I've often heard people complaining that they just don't have any skills or the knowledge, but I truly think that's a pathetic excuse. If you've made it to this video, it means you're literate and capable. You just lack execution skills. So the next thing to do is to act. Just do it, as Nike might say. Starting a cash flow business is the only way to beat the market and build wealth during a recession. If you can find an opportunity or service that isn't filled in your area or spot a niche online, perhaps, a recession is the ideal time to start that business. With a lack of competition and customers actively searching for alternatives, you're perfectly positioned to take advantage of the gap in the market, as long as you're willing to take that opportunity. While most others are cutting back and closing their doors, it's time for you to go full steam ahead and expand, which is exactly what I'm doing with this channel. And you'll see that if you keep following along. So subscribe if you haven't yet. Now, how do you invest during a recession? One of the best ways to build wealth during a recession, especially if you already have a stash of money prepared, is to carefully rebalance a strategic portfolio. Investing during a recession is not just about finding growth in a contracting market, but understanding which phase of the recession we're in. I would say right now we're still in the early stages. The economy has yet to see any real pain other than a couple percentage points of GDP loss as people begin to cut back on spending. We haven't seen any large companies collapse, people losing their jobs at scale, or real declines in asset prices. Yes, we've seen some of the most speculative tech stocks like Netflix and Amazon drop, but we've also seen crypto and NFTs fall considerably. Yet, we're only just seeing the signs of a housing market cooling off and the labor market is still going strong. So knowing what's coming, where's the best place to find value right now? Honestly, a lot of sectors could keep declining, especially if we start seeing layoffs. But what's for certain is that during a recession, consumer staples always perform well. These are your companies that produce everyday essentials that you can't stop buying no matter what. No matter how bad a recession gets, you're still gonna find money to buy toothpaste and toilet paper, I would hope. The same goes for groceries. We still need to eat, and as people stop eating out at higher-end restaurants and eat in more, demand for groceries actually increase during a recession. Although cheap fast food chains like McDonald's, KFC, and Burger King have been surprisingly resilient because you can't beat the convenience of a $2 burger, these types of companies are great to invest in during a recession. As at a minimum, they tend to hold their value and generally they grow the deeper and longer a recession goes on. Focus on the needs of people rather than the wants during a recession. What need can you fulfill that isn't being met right now or that you can deliver even better? I've got an idea. Housing asylum seekers or vulnerable people like the homeless where the government are funding their accommodation. That could be an idea. And if only there was a company that had built a model in which Joe Bloggs behind the camera on a YouTube video watching a bloke called Jack Wicks could click a link that would then get them into a partnership program where they could find a house suitable for the company that would then let it out to the government and they would rent it for 10 years and we'd lock in the profit there and then, giving them cash flow every single month for the rest of the life of that deal. Imagine if that was a thing. Con. The needs aren't necessarily relating only to customers. I'm also talking about business needs. If you can find a way to help another business keep going or even grow during this time, you're gonna be rewarded in kind. Now, here's a little bit of caution. I would usually recommend investing in utility companies or commodities as well, but this recession is unique. We're facing an unprecedented global energy supply shock, and this has thrown the energy markets into complete turmoil. There's no telling how much higher energy prices could go, and a lot of utility companies relating to energy are already at stupid valuations. I would avoid these at all costs. Right now, there's no way to tell how quickly prices could come back when things normalize. These investments are great during a recession, but as things improve and the economy recovers, they tend to lag behind, and you could miss massive rebound opportunities. As 2023 progresses, I would keep a close eye on economic indicators for signs of the economy picking back up, shifting my portfolio away from the previously mentioned categories and back into growth and discretionary sectors. Like I mentioned before, the wants of consumers will come back eventually when they have the excess capital to spend. There are a few main indicators you want to keep your eye on for an inversion in the recession. As we're still in the early stages, some of these are yet to go significantly negative, like the unemployment rate, companies' cash at hand, and inflation. This will come in due time as the recession progresses. When you see inflation has fallen back towards 2% and stabilizes or after unemployment spikes, you start seeing it come back down. As companies' cash reserves are drained, you start seeing them level off and eventually increase. These are all signs of an economic inversion, of a recession leveling off and the bulls coming back to town. You have to be ready to pivot fast if you start seeing these signs, as things will quickly pick up again. Keep in mind, the market always leads the indicators and you'll never be able to perfectly time the market. So a healthy dose of DCA during this time 
would be fine. Now, as you know, or if you watch my recent video, you'll know that I'm not personally a fan of the always DCA strategy, since I actually think it's BS. I prefer to invest in large lump sums during red days or when the market is down. So DCAing during a recession gives you a way better risk to reward ratio than just buying blindly as the market rises to new highs. Now let's get back to our favorite asset class, crypto and NFTs. How will they fare during a downturn like this? Some projects, of course, will do well during a recession, and I'll cover some of them on this channel. Though the space as a whole, I don't really think is likely to recover for a while, at least not to the extent of the 2020 to 2021 bull market. We've seen the board ape floor drop from 150 plus ETH to around 70 ETH as I'm recording this. People and especially institutions are simply too risk averse in this kind of market to really push the prices back up again. However, I see this as a perfect opportunity to get into promising long-term projects as we see new multi-year lows. Not just yet, but they are coming up. Timing and allocation will be key here, as we all know how quickly projects can push back up to new highs with a bit of momentum and a bit of positive sentiment. Once this recession nears its end, we're going to see the money flooding back into crypto and NFT projects as people race to get back in on the next cycle, which is why I've said you need to be early. It really comes down to your personal preference and portfolio allocation, but I'm expecting this recession to last at least until 2023. A good time to look into picking up bargains will probably be mid to late 2023. Now, will this recession be any different? I agree. And and I've lost a lot of money. Well, not, I say a lot of money. I know people have lost a lot more. Yeah, I, I, I started learning about it in the bull market and you couldn't lose. And it was too easy. And, and then we went in heavy six months later. It was... I don't know, 20% of what we put in. I then removed it. So I've actually cashed out at a loss, placed it in something else that's doing better to recoup some of them. And then I'll start reinvesting again now um, with various big projects. I don't uh, test to be a anyone who knows particularly anything. I'm going for the big boys. I'm going for the XRPs. I'm going for the Bitcoins and the Ethereums. And I'm going to just pump money in as, as I've got spare for the next year or two. And, and I expect to see massive growth on them in the long term i'm not looking at it short term so the investment the money i took out that i've then put into something else that's now ticking over and making good money i'm going to start pumping back in on the profits on that so that that's my take on it the truth is the recession will be unique some of the normal rules just simply won't apply this time around while it's important to understand general trends of the recession relying on them blindly without considering the full picture is going to lead a lot of people to ruin this time around unlike past recessions we're facing a mixed bag of negative and surprisingly positive indicators in the mashup of economic turmoil. The labor force participation rate has been low for a number of years and is still on par with levels from 20 years ago. This is coinciding with an equally impressively low unemployment rate. A large factor in both of these statistics is the demographic change we're seeing. As millions of baby boomers took the lockdowns as a chance to retire in addition to the natural retirement phase for their cohort. This And for those who don't know what a baby boomer is, it's nuts. Look into it. I'll put a link in the description actually for, for a video that, that explains what a baby boomer is. It's basically, I'm 30, so it'd be my parents were in the baby boomer years where there was loads of kids and the population went mad. So there's this whole sort of generation of loads of people that are all affecting the markets, i.e. when they all retire at similar times, then certain markets are affected by the decisions they make when they go on holidays, when they buy a holiday home, all this stuff. So it's really interesting read. Loan presents unique challenges and opportunities as the largest generation in history goes into retirement over the next few years. Remember how I mentioned earlier that households could be saving excess money relative to their cash flow? Well, this is the final and crucial factor that will line up with a few others to make this recession truly unique. With baby boomers retiring, hiring, wealthy households pulling extra cash temporarily, and businesses sitting on a war chest of capital to withstand the recession, we're set up for a sharp and powerful rebound. While the recession will be real and painful for many, especially in the poorest of society, as energy and housing costs bite, this recession will make the rich truly wealthy. As asset- Believe in this so much, I think the recession is gonna be fast and surprising for a lot of people, and they're gonna wonder, what happened? How, how has this happened? And, and I agree, I think that the the world is a different place and there's a way in which people can make money now and i think that is going to like he says again with the baby boomers with cash reserves you know it's, it's, it's going to allow us to sort of dig our way out of it fairly quickly too so yeah fingers crossed that happens it goes in hard fast back out the other side and, and resume normality prices dip and rebound, the job market will mostly remain hot, fueling economic growth and the continued wage rises as living costs come down, resulting in a real standard of living increase over the next few years. Those that prepare themselves right now, accumulate up the cash needed to invest or build the companies of tomorrow are going to achieve generational wealth. So if you're watching this video, love it. What a video, really intelligent guy, by the way way more intelligent than I could ever hope to be. And all of it makes total sense. I would, however, say it's not for Joe Bloggs and the bog standard family man person sitting there going, how do I avoid 
really struggling here. This is kind of like you have to have a, a pretty decent knowledge and, and a pretty decent risk. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not for it's not for everyone. It's not your every man strategies here. You have the ability to get the knowledge. There's no excuse. It's all online. It's all there for you to understand if you take the time to do so. But I think basically if people can focus on a way in which they can make 500 quid a month more as a family that will make all the difference when we go into a crash and into a recession and it will protect you from having to change your lifestyle all that much and making an extra 500 quid a month is truly not that difficult and i would love to help you legitimately genuinely help you because you will be helping us and you will be helping us house vulnerable people who are ultimately going to be more affected in a, in a down market as well. So please do comment below. What do you think is going to happen? Number one, in, in do you think we are going to crash or do you think it's just going to be a smooth leveler? Do you think we're going to go hard and fast and back out the other side? If you want to get involved and you want to help us find properties for the vulnerable people and get paid to do so on a monthly basis, then please write in below, work with you. And I will reach out. We'll give you the form to fill out. We'll get you involved in the program and you can get out there finding deals and, and we can all make money together. See you next video.